Hey folks, how are you doing? It is December 4th. Uh, I'll continue with my Vlogmas all the way through the month of December. So today, um, as you can see, I'm in, indoors. for get this done bright and early before I go out riding. Um, it's been raining on and off all night, so it's going to be very wet out there. Um, and as kind of so often do, as the uh, day shortens, is try and cram in a good ride between 10 and 2 uh, and getting that practice in a little bit earlier this year because it's going to get cold over the next few uh, weeks and uh, as we go into the new year. So 10 to 2 is kind of a, I try and cram in as much as I can with the odd big day in there as well. Um, so I thought today I'd design a little bit of a, a gravel route since I'm riding out on my nuke proof. So I, I just, actually, if, Neil Copeland kind of prompted me to do this video really. Um, it's a discussion around whether you should use an online tool like this for designing gravel routes and things, or whether you you know you should use a map and things like that. Well, I, 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 um, um, I love to use technology. I love to embrace it, and there's no reason why you can't use ordnance survey map data in a tool like uh, Ride with GPS. Not sure about Komoot, um, Strava. You certainly can as well. As in the toggle here, you've got it hiding away. You can see uh, um, Ordnance Survey Cycle and Ordnance Survey out, Outdoor. But how to understand them is a is another thing, really. So um, I'm actually just going to, before we look at that, because the, the route often gets in the way, um, I wanted to show you where the lines are and what they mean. So I'm just going to turn the heat map up as well. I tend to toggle these off a lot. On and off all the time. So these dashed lines here tend to uh, represent this well, a white road with dashed lines on the edges. They tend to represent broken roads and things. So you can ride those and they might be blocked off at one end, you never know, they might be gated, uh, sometimes you can get through. A green dash line like this means it's for, for bikes and pedestrians. We have a look around. Let's go northwest a bit because I know there's some cycle lanes around here. Uh, here, this dashed blue line that means it's a uh, space design designated for cycleways. Basically, it's a, a shitty bird has stripped down the edge of the road, or <laughs> it's a meter wide at best. Then you've got uh, des um, segregated cycle lanes, which are a solid blue line. If we proceed down the Dutch Riverside. This is a normal road, which then turns into a crappy road. And then, suddenly, it turns into a, a dash blue line, which represents basically a shared cycleway. So you can follow that all the way along, all along the river. It ends there, drops back onto a crappy, it's not even a road that, it's kind of a gravel track, single track. Um, the, above it here, as you can see this, this brown line, these are uh, pedestrian bits you're not meant to go on. Um, sometimes you might want to hop on them <laughs> just to get across somewhere where it's a disconnected route. Um, so I'm in OSM cycle mode at the moment. So it overlays reds and blues. I'm not so sure what blues are. Um, so I think if we, I'm going to look at a Wikipedia page, it's about OpenStreetMap. So. Um, yeah, that doesn't really apply. I'll come back to that in just a moment. I was just uh, wondering what the red meant, and it says red is forbidden, so it obviously doesn't apply here. But basically, this is the uh, Trans Pennine Trail, which is made up of roads, broken tracks, as I follow it down, a shared cycleway. It also runs through a footway. Now, if you actually do your route and click past it, uh, ride with GPS will calculate that that's a footway and take you around it. So we just clear that again. I'm just following it around. Um, this is kind of the route that I've come up with today. I just follow it through, keep going. And here in Burnt Ings Plantation, you've got a green dashed line, which means it's for bikes and pedestrians. But it's, um, as you can see, it goes through woods. I, I believe the description is. Yeah, look, green is for pedestrians and bikes. 
So uh, it actually goes through a wood. I've been through here before, so it's very much off, uh, very much, uh, what do you call it, muddy. <laughs> Uh, it's no, there's no, it's kind of a detrayal, but it's at this time of year it's probably not very uh, clever. And if you can see that when you uh, go into in satellite mode, so it goes off, winds through the trees, hidden all the way through the trees. You can see a little bit of white sticking through, and then it goes all the way through the trees. You can't see it; it runs down the edge there, and eventually, as you can see it running through, it pops out just here. And then it's there's a cross there's a train line just there which you have to dismount push through by hand and then you're back on a gravel uh, broken road again more proper roads then a sheer space it's all a, this here this particular bit just outside a uh, kind of uh, Barnaby Dawn I think it is this is a new re newly resurfaced um, bit of circleway all the way perhaps uh, here. So this could probably be on a solid blue line. Um, a little bit further down, you got the descriptions here. Look, solid line, smooth surface, okay for road bikes. Dash line, solid surface, okay for gravel bikes, mountain bikes, trekking, that kind of thing. But you've also got a spaced dash line. I'm not sure the difference is on that. It's a bad surface for mountain bikes. So I guess I'll, uh, if I see a, you know, a largely spaced dash line, that's probably where the lines are, uh, are shorter and the space is longer, uh, that will be a mountain bike, but I've not really seen those. And uh, as you can see, you know, it continues all the way along there, there's a blue line, and eventually, you know, you're reaching the outskirts of uh, of uh, Doncaster. So uh, if, if I just load, go back to the route that I've designed for this morning, uh, let's have a look. Now it's quite confusing to see because you've got your root on it, but um, I wish there was a op you was able to opaque or something like that. But as you can see, um, I've got it going down the route, and these here signify the green, you know, the off-road gravel sections. They also signify the bits you shouldn't be on, the pedestrian bits, which is why you know it'd be useful just to be able to toggle that on or off, but. I've not found a way to do that yet. Maybe it's uh, in hidden away. Again, that's a, we know that's a, a space for bikes, so it's it's actually dashed out because it, it that just represents the surface. So it's unpaved, you see, kind of gravel. And again, it goes all the way around. This here is highlight in pure white. Uh, it's this unknown section here, I, I'd imagine, uh, as it's dashed through there, kind of goes up a little bit as well, <laughs> 14 meters. Um, so we know where the really rough, we can see where the rough stuff is. And again, a bit of rough stuff there. I've not been through there, but it's marked as a place where bikes can ride. Now this particular section here, if I clear the map, uh, oh no, it's fine. It's, it's, it's a broken track, but uh, we can see if we swap to the OSM mode, we can see it's a broken track, the way it's dashed, the dashed line. Uh, and of course, again, it suddenly it turns into a place that's okay for bikes to ride. So, yeah, it's, it's really. You just, it, obviously, it's annoying when you see stuff like that. Well, that's an ideal place where you can just chunk through. And again, you get that with uh, some pedestrian areas as well. I can't think of any examples. But um, I didn't see any on this particular route that I've done today. But you know, sometimes it it pays just to hop onto onto the route really quickly, and you know, just get across to the the, the bike park kind of thing. Um, yeah, so that's my route for today. I'm gonna go out at ten o'clock. As I said, you know, it's this time of year I tend to drop back to like four hour rides um, when the weather's miserable and wet and dodgy. And just you know, put some longer rides when the weather's not so bad. So yeah, you could say I'm a fair weather rider, but I'm really I'm not. I'm just trying to make the most of the time and get a good ride in, uh, in the possibly best part of the day. Really. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. It's a little bit something different to uh, and what I've been putting out recently. So if you want to go check check out uh, 
information on the OSM maps. Do what I did. I'm not going to stick your link. Just type OSM cycle way in uh, Google and you'll find a Wikipedia page all about it with the, the colours and what the, uh, the solid and dashed lines mean. Right, any questions, comments, stick them down below. How do you do your routine? I'd be interested to uh, uh, find out what software do you use. Get involved in the comments below. Right, see you later. Bye.